Hey, welcome everybody back to HSC podcast number 12. Uh, it's March Madness still, so we're still talking March Madness. Got uh, Big Box Steve on the mic, uh, moderating with, of course, Derek the Big Smooth. And so you're only going to get two experts tonight, but it's all the experts you need because we are the experts in our own mind. <laughs> right? At least we think we're experts, right? Yes. Come on. Um, I, we didn't look so expert in the tournament so far, though. Uh, but it's been a rough tournament. Well, I just have everything that I've learned. So the nice thing is Dickie V had um, had uh, Iowa and Kentucky in his final. So uh, Iowa was a shocker for a lot of people. I mean, l- let's start there. Because I had Iowa there too. Uh, they looked really strong finishing out the season. Uh, they were shooting a high percentage, which then they come out and then they shoot one of the lowest percentages they've shot all year in the tournament. Like that's laying an egg. If, if you ask me, uh, you, you're really throwing yourself under the bus there. Um, so yeah, let, let's get into that a little bit. So last podcast, we talked about, you know, the tournament, we gave our upset predictions and we went through there and, uh, I give you a little credit for uh, calling out the Big Ten. You know, Big Ten did not perform well, uh, at least in the second round. Like first round, they did pretty well. You know, a lot of them advanced, but then the second round, they just fell out like like crazy, right? And now there's only two of them left. So yeah, you have nine tournament entries, um, and then you only have two left in the Sweet Sixteen, but. You also got to look at one thing, which there were no top seeds from the Big Ten, though, right? So what was their highest seed was three, right? Right. All right. So they didn't really have any ones or twos, and and they just had kind of a lot, a lot of mid-levels. And, and Michigan was one of the highest in 11 <laughs> and right. looking better than most. And so I think, to me, the Big Ten was a surprise, but kind of not a surprise. You know, you kind of called it there, so – I kind of want to start threes. there. They did have two threes, yeah. Um, so before oh, we get produce, into that, I was sorry, Steve, but yeah. uh, oh wait, is Wisconsin Wisconsin lost? Huh? Yeah, Wisconsin. Never mind. Lost. Yeah, yeah, it is yeah, only two teams. W- w- yeah, two just two teams. So what do you think? So why 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 shouldn't people, you know? Uh, pick the big 10 like what's what's keeping the big 10 down in in this tournament or historically you know you you mentioned we talked about this the other day uh last year they didn't do well either last couple years they haven't done well so what keeps the big 10 down uh when it comes to tournament time i it's hard to say i know like the one that always irritates me the most is illinois um because they got kofi cockburn who's unstoppable in the middle And their guards are the ones shooting the ball all the time. And it's like, you got to go with what you know. Yeah. And they didn't do that in their game. And it was just like, it was mind numbing because they couldn't, no one could stop him. But then all their guards are just start shooting up shots. And then it's like, I don't know. Maybe it's just. Is that a coaching coaching problem? Huh? Is that a coaching problem? I think so. I think maybe they just don't know how to coach in the tournament because it's a whole different game uh that's why michigan's probably doing well it's Jawan howard he knows he knows how to win in big tournament games he's got experience and, and Izzo, they they played well uh great yes. game against duke they were right in it could have won that mm-hmm. game um they, they obviously could have been in the sweet 16 but you know they ran into a little bit more talent in duke right. so Izzo, great coach so yeah, I could see that. Um, Iowa, I think, was the same way, to be honest with you, because, again, I think if Iowa plays their game, they win. Uh, if you shoot that low of a percentage in the first half from three, do you not go into the locker room and say, hey, let's stop shooting threes. <laughs> we're bigger than this team. You know, we're obviously more athletic than Richmond. You know, let, let's move our offense. Let's, you know, get into it. Let's get down low. Let's let's box out. You know, let's do the little things. But still, instead, they just come out and pop more threes. Well, that's like my big example is um, Gonzaga, Georgia State. 
So at, at halftime, it was, what, a one-point game? And everyone's like, oh, Gonzaga is going to lose. And they ended up winning by 21. Why? Right. Because they went into to Timmy and they went inside. And that's what they learned. They were like, this is what we do best. These guys are smaller than us. We should be able to take advantage. Well, and that's what, what Arizona, right? Arizona was on upset alert, but there they were just more bit were bigger, stronger, faster. And that's why in overtime they overcame. Right. Yeah. And, and which, you know, you can't take anything away from uh, uh, TCU. Uh, TCU in that game. Uh, especially that guy, the, uh, their big guy in the middle, guy that he played amazing. He did his best game of the year. Like he really showed up for that game. Um, but I, I think there might be a, a theme there with the, these big 10 teams. I mean, maybe they're not taking some of these teams seriously. They're getting out of their game. Is it a coaching issue? Uh, that might be, that might be something to look at there with the big 10 or maybe, you know, because it's the Big Ten and and they're playing each other, they're getting a little getting too, too many teams in there. They're getting a little high, overly rated, you know, because they're the Big Ten. Right. It's like the SEC in football, maybe you know, like if you're an SEC team, even if you're an Arkansas, you know, or a Tennessee right. who's not having a great year, like you're still making balls, and then right. you're losing in bowl games and and. Uh, you know, and kind of getting that just because we're SEC. So uh, a little disappointed in the Big Ten. That, that was a big one. Uh, but, I mean, let's talk about the surprise of the tournament for a second, right? What is it? You know, obviously, St. Peter's. St. Peter's. So, first of all, let's just talk about the Kentucky game for a second. How did they come in and beat Kentucky? They got the swagger there in New Jersey. A lot of New Yorkers, right? They have no fear. <laughs> And that's how I feel like they played. They played with, we don't care. We don't care who you are. We're just going to go in and beat you. And that's what they did. I mean, they, I mean, it went to overtime, but it wasn't like, I felt like they had it. Yeah. The entire time. They did. And uh, I was talking to my buddy, uh, he actually played at UMass with Marcus Camby, uh, which is really cool, but we were talking about that game specifically and uh, he's talking about when it comes tournament time, cause he played in tournaments, things like that. He's like the team that brings the energy and the defense is the key, right? When you're hustling and you're moving around and more importantly, you're playing good defense every single play of the game, you're going to have chances to win, especially if you're a lower rated team um, against some of these higher rated teams and after I kind of looked back at some of the, the game uh, of the Kentucky game and then watched their full second game, that's what I saw from them. They are hustling every single play. They're going for every ball, every loose ball. They're, take, they're not taking any playoff um, on every position, you know, across the, across the board. So um, I think when it comes to tournament time, that's what you got to kind of look at. Who are the teams hustling, right? Who are the teams that are, are really playing great defense? And I think that's why St. Peter's is there right now, especially in that game against Murray State. They were all over. They were flying to the ball. And right, so, yeah. Defense wins championships, right? And right. in energy, it's that's what you see. When you watch in these games and you see – some of them and you're like oh my gosh that defense it's like they they take it down to like three seconds a lot of times and that's just playing really good defense and now look st peter's has got purdue big 10 school purdue's big though can we get another upset though <laughs> the, they're, the, the the problem i see with the purdue st peter's game st peter's doesn't have a lot of length and purdue is really tall and so, so that comes down to what we were talking about before. Does Purdue play their game, right? Do they get it inside? Do they slow it down, protect the ball, run their offense? Right. Right. And that might be a coaching thing that we see, you know, happen to Purdue. So I, I don't think I, I can't, you can't count St. Peter's out at this point because they've played really well up to this point against really two really good teams. 
I know Murray State doesn't sound like one of the best teams, but I mean, what did they? What were they like? Thirty-one and two, or whatever. Yeah, I think so. They had won. <laughs> they had won like twenty in a row. row. Yeah, yeah. twenty some in a row up to that point. So Murray State was no slouch for them to get to the Sweet Sixteen, and that's got to give them some confidence uh, going into that game. So, so obviously, uh, St. Peter's is the the biggest shocker and 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 the number one. But in the first round, you know, were there any other big shockers to you? Like, who did you really think was going to go through that didn't? Uh, were there any other major disappointments in these first couple rounds? Well, I know it was a six eleven, um, but I had Alabama going far. And they just kind of laid an egg against Notre Dame. Right. And I thought, you know, Notre Dame going in after already playing a game, they might be a little flat, but no, they just, they made Alabama look bad. I don't think it was so much Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame played as good as they normally have played. You know, I think Alabama just really was flat and did not play well. Um, Cause I had, I thought Alabama would play better and I had them going pretty deep as well. So that was a shocker to me. Um, and obviously for me, Iowa was a big disappointment. Um, but you, you know, I don't think you had Iowa going super far. So, I had them losing to Wick, Richmond. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, so you didn't have Iowa anyway, but that was one of my disappointments in there. Um, uh, Michigan was, is one who I had in, in the Sweet 16. So that was a, a positive you know, for me, you know, that I thought Michigan was going to do well and they did. Um, I also had North Carolina going and that was again, a, a positive surprise. I don't think a lot of people expected them to beat Baylor. Uh, some of, right. you know, a lot of people didn't have them beat Marquette, you know? So uh, that one was also a, a big one for me. Uh, what about UConn? You know, a lot of, I heard a lot of this, like, uh, I don't know if you saw Charles Barkley, like had UConn going really deep and he like, he broke down his bracket and he was just tearing up UConn. You know, was that, was UConn a surprise for you? No, I had New Mexico state winning. Yeah. That was uh new Mexico state was, I think that's the one that they have uh 12 players that play. Right. And I had the New Mexico state winning as well. Yeah. For me, the one in it, I know it's, it was an up, but I, I was surprised. I thought Davidson was going to upset Michigan State. And it came, you know, it was a one-point game, so. So, let's talk about that game for a second. And I also think this happened in the um, uh, TCU-Arizona game Mm -hmm. where refs are deciding the game. Right. And that's disappointing. I mean, that's that's kind of the nature of the business, you know. You can't blame the refs, you know, they're doing their best. You hope they're doing their best, but how disappointing it is for a team like Davison or a team like TCU, where it really feels like the refs decided the game there near the end. Right. Well, like the TCU Arizona game, they were calling it like they're let's they were more like let's let's get as much TV time as we can get by calling tons of fouls. So many players in foul trouble. And then at the end of the game, they they swallowed their whistle and right. I was like, they, they just, they mauled that guy. And lo- luckily for them to get to overtime that the guy didn't, re- he didn't realize that he, ne- he needed to shoot the ball. Cause he mm-hmm. thought, Oh, I'm going to go dunk it. And I was like, sorry, dude, he ran out of time. Know how much time's left, but it's kind of, it's funny that like four TCU players had four fouls and all of a sudden, and now they're not going to call fouls. Well, and that's the point, right? I mean, and that's the question is, is it because it's the end of the game? Are the refs afraid to make that call and decide the game at the free throw line? Well, they called a, they called a few fouls on TCU right at the end of the game. I mean, it wasn't the last second, but it was in the last minute or so. Right. So it's like, you you got to call it the full game if you're going to do it that way. Right. If you're going to swallow the whistle, you got to swallow it for like two minutes, not just like 20 seconds. Because now you have two teams, in my opinion, and I didn't watch every single game, but I watched most of them, where a Davison and TCU ha- both have legitimate complaints, you know, cases to say, look, you know, we got screwed. 
and both of those teams are teams that could have moved forward. They have they mm-hmm. both are very good teams. Uh, and one's beating a one seed and the other is beating a really good Michigan state team. So, uh, yeah. I, and I got to say, and I mentioned to this to you guys earlier, when I'm watching these games, I'm seeing a lot of missed calls, uh, it, rebounding the, the push in the back on the rebounds and the over the back on the rebounds, but you're going to go out and call like hand checks and, or uh, going straight up and, and, and ones, but you're missing all these little calls. I, I get it, it's college, but how, how much do they gotta hold the refs accountable? Oh, they do. And I just, the thing that irritates me the most is uh, they got Gene Sterator doing <laughs> the thing and it's like, dude, just go away. I'm tired of you. <laughs> it's like, oh, he was a, it's like no wonder he was a college ref also and it's like you're horrible i can't right. stand you <laughs> and he was even making bad calls like they were like okay well this is gonna be this and i'm like nope you're wrong dude yeah no he's he's not the best replay official <laughs> that he's seen it's like, great, going- another i go to a different game he's on there too it's like oh <laughs> because he can do it remotely you can see yeah. him anywhere <laughs> so yeah so first and second round uh, good stuff happening. So we're in the Sweet 16 now. So let's talk about, you know, wh- where do we go from here? Um, let's just break it down real quick. So Sweet 16, uh, Gonzaga, Arkansas. What do you Gotta got? Gotta go Zags. Yeah, I mean, we both it, got Zags winning. And this is the thing. It's funny. That's the only region that went one, two, three, four. Right. Every other region has a double digit team in the suites in their four. Right. You're right. Uh, two, two in, in a couple of them. Right. All right. Well, two, one, two and one, and then uh, one, and then an eight and, uh, and an 11. So, so Gonzaga, uh, we both have Gonzaga winning the championship. So I think we're both in agreement there. So Texas tech Duke uh, does Texas tech have a chance in this game. Yeah, I think Texas Tech wins. I just I feel like Duke is going to come out flat because it's it's all about Coach K. Um, they should have lost to Michigan State. I, I just don't see it. And Texas Tech's been really hot. Right. I mean, I need Duke to win for my bracket, but after watching Texas Tech play, if they shoot the ball like they did last game and they move the ball around like they did. Um, I think Duke has some trouble with them. Uh, so, you know, I think I'm going to get on board with that. And I think even though my bracket says Duke, I think I'm going to go Texas Tech as well. Um, and hopefully they don't let me down and they play like they did last game. Um, Duke has some great one-on-one players, you know. Right. But I think Texas Tech played like a team. And if they continue to play like a team, they can definitely win that game. Right. That was another game the Duke Michigan state game where like the, the refs kind of like, were like, really? Like there was a lot of calls in that one too. Well, I kind of, I don't know. Maybe it's, (laughs) I mean, you want to conspiracy theory it out to ratings and things like that, but you look Mm -hmm. at the North Carolina Baylor game, right? Everybody said, Oh, well the guy fouled out and that's what led to the downfall. But you watch a lot of that game towards the, that second half, like, the refs are also calling everything Baylor's way and, and like almost trying to get them back in the game, you know, which I don't understand because you think you'd want North Carolina. Well, even, even though maybe they just want a good North game, Carolina. you know, that's what I mean. It's like, because it's a 25 point game, right? People are going to start turning the game off. And as soon as they start turning the game off, there go your TV ratings. Right. Right. And so, and again, you know, we're talking conspiracy stuff. At the same time, it's like as as a North Carolina fan and watching that game, you see every little call and you're like, come on. Right. You know, so, so that was definitely a thing for me. Um, so that brings us to North Carolina UCLA, which I, I think we're in, in disagreement on this one. Well, like you said before, though, I have to go UCLA because they're in my final four. Um, <laughs> that's a tough game. They're both. I could see it going either way. I just think I I watched UCLA game. They're very talented. All I mean, North Carolina is obviously talented too, 
I just think UCLA had the experience last year and they're coming back. So I think they have the advantage. Right. Yeah. And, and you, you can't, you can't doubt UCLA's uh, tournament experience, bringing all those guys back, coming in at a high seed. They've played well up to this point, but if you look at the way North Carolina's played in the tournament up to this point, if they don't lose, you know, uh, what's his name in the, um, to that foul, they're up 25 on the, on the, one of the number one seeds. They probably win that game by 20. They blew out their first game. I mean, they are just dominating right now. Well, yeah, but UCLA destroyed St. Mary's. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that was like, you could tell the difference in talent right there. Yeah. I think St. Mary's, uh, they they came they ran into a, a much more athletic team a much more talented team which obviously UCLA it doesn't have that over Carolina right they're not right. going to come out talent or out athletic uh, North Carolina right <laughs> not many teams in the country are going to do that uh, so I think it'll be a good game to be honest with you um, I think it'll be close it, it's hard but being I I have North Carolina going to the Final Four. You have UCLA going to the final four. So we're, we're going opposite on this one. I'm going North Carolina. You're going UCLA. Um, but without North Carolina, being a North Carolina fan as well, without having them in my bracket, just, just being, you know, completely even across the board, I still think North Carolina wins this game. So that brings us to Purdue and St. Peter's. Sadly, it's the end for St. Peter's. Um, I don't believe, has there ever been a 15 seed make it to the Elite Eight? No, I think uh, it's the Sweet 16. There's been three of them, right? Yeah. But none so in the I, Elite Eight. I'm going to let Big Ten have a win here. I'm going to say <laughs> Purdue makes it at least as far as the Elite Eight. The, the St. Peter's give them a game? That's my question. Is it one of those things where it's like they made this far, it's a huge letdown because Purdue wins by 20? It's hard because if you look at all the stats, Purdue is like 12 points more per game, give up six points less. I mean, they shoot about, Purdue shoots about 50%. So it's going to be tough for St. Peter's to play defense on them because it's even showing the stat wise that Purdue's a better defensive team also. Right. But they are in the Big Ten. So I give St. Peter's a chance. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. I'm saying there's a chance. <laughs> um, I, I think Purdue wins this game, and, and I think they win it handily. Um, St. Peter's had a great run. They're just going to be physically overmatched in this game, and that's going to be the problem they're going to run into. If, uh, if Purdue does not break press well, Right, and they don't move the ball well. St. Peter's, you know, obviously has a chance. Everybody has a chance. So Purdue can lose this game. I think. I don't think St. Peter's can win. I think right. Purdue can lose. Is what I think could happen. Uh, but I don't think it'll happen. And, and I'm going to take Purdue in a, in a, a fairly hefty win. Uh, this should be a real fun one. Houston and Arizona. I'm going upset. I'm taking Houston. Um, they've kind of there. They kind of hang around. They've been around the last few years, making it this far. And they, uh, I just like, I like Houston. I feel like they kind of, because they have been around the last couple of years. And I, and I feel like I, I really liked them in the last couple of years. I think it was last year that I thought they would go to the final four. Maybe it's 2020. I thought that they were right there. Uh, so they have a good program that, that they're developing down there. Right. So how does Houston beat them? What, what's, what's their strategy there? Like how, how do you, cause I mean, Arizona, they're long and they're athletic and they can shoot and they can rebound. Yeah. They should have lost to TCU, though. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, well, and that's the thing. You got another uh, Houston's very similar to TCU. Yeah, they play. 
They're not much of three point shooters. That's the yeah. only issue with Houston. Um, but you know, they played really good defense against Illinois. So it's just, I guess it comes down to if um, Arizona wants to actually get it inside. But even that, uh, in the um, TCU game, he was, the player in the middle was just crushing them. Yeah. Like they couldn't stop him at all. Yeah, and he's, he, he wasn't big. I mean, he's big as far as bulky, but he wasn't taller. Right, he was like 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, right. But he was... Yeah, they couldn't stop him at all. If they would have just kept giving it to him, it would have. They were starting to have to double, double and triple team him at the end. So can Houston do that inside? Do you think? Well, well, I'm not sure. We'll see. That's <laughs> the thing is, I I think they can stop the inside game. Um, they have. It's so hard because they're not really – Houston's a different team. They're more of a guard-oriented team. So right. I just got a feeling I think they can beat Arizona. They've got the experience. Because that they don't have the inside play that I think they need to win the game, I have to, I have to pick Arizona. Um, if Houston shoots well – they could, they definitely can win this game because that's what they're good at, right? I mean, if you saw the Illinois, you, you obviously, um, you know, they did, they shot the ball well, but Houston, in my opinion, also, which I think is a detriment at this point, has had a, a pretty easy road to the Sweet 16. Uh, UAB didn't play well against them. Illinois really didn't play well at all, right? You know, and so they haven't and had now a you, close game. Right, and so so now you're coming into an Arizona team who's coming off of a, a a really big game. You know, there's a lot of a hype, you know, coming to this game for them. So uh, I'm going to go Arizona uh, on that game, and uh, not just because they're in my Final Four, <laughs> because I think Arizona will win. So Michigan Villanova. Well, I'll go first on this one. I really think Michigan's played well to this point, but Villanova looked so good. Uh, they're, they're playing great defense. They're shooting the ball well. They're moving the ball well. Uh, they're playing as a team. Uh, I, I got to pick Villanova in this one, even though uh, I really want to see Michigan go far. I love Juwan Howard. Uh, I, I love a lot of things they're doing. I, I just think Villanova's played it too tough. Yeah, I agree with you. I got Villanova. I think it's going to be – I thought it would be Creighton in the Final Four, but I kind of think there's going to be two Big East teams in the Final Four. And, of course, that means Villanova's making it. And um, right. they looked really good. And they had, But then again, like you said about Houston, they haven't had a test yet. Right. Yeah, and um, – but, you know, that I think that matters. That, that does matter. Um, Ohio State played well in the second half against them, they, but the first half was just a joke because uh, I thought Ohio State had a chance to do really well. And if they played in the second half like they did in the first half, they probably would have beat Villanova. Right. Uh, and but Ohio State will be back. They're young. Uh, that Ohio State's going to be a force for the next couple of years, uh, as long as the guys stay. So Villanova there. So Kansas Providence. Uh, are you surprised Kansas is still here? No, I know Kansas is, yes. But <laughs> I mean they had yeah, well, I had Creighton winning, so and they were Creighton was playing pretty well with them, and then it kind of got it out of hand at the end. Another right. ref game. But, yeah, I mean it's hard like when you play like Creighton does though. It, you, it's kind of an all or nothing game. Right. If you don't make shots, you know, if you don't shoot 35, 40%, you're not going to win. Right. I got Providence in this one. I got Providence beating Kansas since Providence has looked really good. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think this is a toss up game. It's this is a really hard game for me to pick. 
just like you, I didn't have either of these teams. I had Iowa. Um, so when I look at these, this game, I, watching these two teams play, though, uh, and, and seeing both of them, uh, most, most of both of their games, uh, I'm going to go with Kansas. I just don't think Providence will uh, come athletically to this game to beat them. Uh, probably the most interesting game in the Sweet 16, though, to me, you got an 11 seed in Iowa State and a 10 seed in Miami for this la for the last game. I mean, isn't that to me that's a great Sweet 16 game? How often do you get to see an 11 and a 10 playing in the Sweet 16? Because that means no matter what, you got a double digit seed right. going to the Elite Eight. Well, the problem is, is if you look at these two teams, should they have been an 11 and 10 seed? Right. No, Miami, mm -hmm. not for sure. I mean, Iowa State, yeah, arguably, yeah, you could probably give them a seven. You know, they could have switched uh, with a couple different teams there. Um, but Miami, I don't think is a 10 seed. But they are. I mean, uh, so I still think it's great, though. I think it's great for the tournament. I think it's great to see uh, a higher seed get into the to the lead eight. So, so who wins it? So what do you got? You got I was thinking Miami. Miami. Miami's played the tougher teams and they have annihilated them. Mm -hmm. I mean, the USC game was close, but they just destroyed Auburn. And so I'm I'm just Iowa Auburn State didn't all, stand a chance. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that has the supposed to have the number one draft pick on the Jabari Smith. Mm -hmm. And they just destroyed them. So yeah, I'm taking Miami. Yeah, the thing with Miami is they've had a – they've played tough teams all season, you know, and they've played well against them. Right. So Miami is a team I had going. I had winning this uh, – winning up to here anyway. So I got to go Miami too. Iowa State, um, they've played well. I think Miami's more athletic, and it'll probably help them win the game. Right. And Iowa State before the tournament had lost three straight. They'd lost to Texas Tech, Baylor, and Oklahoma State. Right. I think they just kind of got a nice draw and were able to get by teams. You know, you had Wisconsin, Big Ten team. They didn't, <laughs> didn't really decide to coach that game. So I think it's an end of a run for them. Yeah. Yeah. So Miami probably wins this one. But, you know, who knows? Iowa State, uh, sometimes that that little dip before the end of the season can help. They played some tough teams. So maybe it gave them a, a, a little eye opener, you know, hey, we got to get ready for the tournament. So who was your original final four and what's your prediction for what the final four is going to be? I had Gonzaga, UCLA, um, Creighton and Tennessee. So Ooh. Creighton, Tennessee are out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had a wonderful first day and then I started losing <laughs> ever since that day. So you need that UCLA game. <laughs> yeah. So I got Gonzaga UCLA still, and then I'm going Villanova Providence. Okay. I think, uh, Villanova has a chance there. Um, Providence again, you know, I, I think Kansas wins that game. So, um, so you have two of your your original four still still have a chance there. All right. Mm -hmm. So in my four, I had Gonzaga, North Carolina, Arizona, and Iowa. And so Iowa's the only one that really let me down. Uh, but I still I'm I'm feeling pretty good about Gonzaga, North Carolina, Arizona, to be honest with you. Uh, I think those three still go. That that four seed, I'm going to go out on a limb, Miami. going out on a limb, and I'm going to take Miami. I'm going to get that 10 seed in there. So, so my final four predictions will be Gonzaga, North Carolina, Arizona, Miami. And hopefully that happens because that keeps me with three of the four <laughs> yeah. from my original. Uh, and it gives me a chance to stay in the bracket. <laughs> and then, uh, obviously, uh, uh, we'll circle back for final four. Uh, next podcast, see where we're at talk about championship game and see how it goes.
Because of the, probably all our teams will lose. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're going to be predicting whole new teams for the final four and for the champions. <clears throat> so overall, great tournament this year, I got to say. Loved watching it. Very exciting. Uh, some, yeah, exciting games, lots of overtimes, but, uh, you know, upsets. Not just upsets, though, but to me, it was a very balanced tournament where I felt like any team, you know, could have won a lot of these games. Right. I mean, even Georgia State, Gonzaga, at one point, everybody was like, oh, my gosh, you know, how is right. Georgia State in this game, you know? And so you saw a lot of that, uh, this tournament, and uh, that was good to see. Uh, I, what do you think about that? Well, I, yeah, I agree. I will give a shout out though. And I know he's not going to probably be a big, a great pro, but watching Drew Timmy out there, it's kind of crazy. He was going insane in the last game and it was just like, he took over. Yeah. Um, and he just looks, you know, he's got the headband <laughs> and the goatee going and doesn't look like he should be playing basketball at all. He's that old school player. Yeah. And he took over, he took that game over. Yeah. Yeah, and he knew what he had to do. That's they lose that game if he doesn't say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna take over. Give me the ball. You know, did things on defense as well. Yeah. You know, he did he did everything on both sides of the ball to make sure they won that game. So yeah, that's that's that is cool. And and I appreciate his style. I, I really feel like he's that old school type player. Right. And that's good to see. So uh, but across the board. Again, I, I love to see the talent that teams like, even though Davison lost, I love to see how they're bringing in lots of talent, you know. And then you have a team like St. Peter's um, going to the Sweet 16, uh, even a team like Creighton, you know, who, who could have easily won that Kansas game, where you don't expect a Creighton to be competing with Kansas's and, and these. SEC teams and these ACC teams. So, well, you know, now Creighton is in the Big East now, right? So, but, but it's still, it's still, it, you know, it, if you're still, Creighton hasn't developed a name yet, right? Though Big right. East, you're still talking Villanova and UConn and and uh, Seton Hall and, and some of the other teams there. Right. Providence. So, Providence, right? So, but Creighton will be there, but it's still nice to see them, you know, bringing in teams that can really compete. And I just felt like outside of a handful of games, there was a lot of competition. Even the teams that ended up blowing out at the end, they were close along a lot of the way. Maybe they got tired, you know, maybe their, their bench wasn't as deep, but they still played well, you know, New Mexico state almost upset Arkansas. They could have seen them in the sweet 16. I mean, right. Yeah. And that's cool. That's great for me. You know, I love that. So uh, one of the reasons I love the NCAA tournament, but I, I think we're seeing a, a hopefully a new era of college basketball to where uh, we get to these tournaments and, you know, who knows who's going to win. Uh, I saw a thing as one of the perfect brackets still left, you know, it's from somebody who doesn't even watch basketball, you know, and he was just randomly picking teams. And uh, that tells you how, balanced you know it is out there well i think i sent this to you but this is the crazy thing and we talk about upsets and we talk about this and um it's the rankings by what is their best finish and the crazy one is uh, there's never been and this is what you should have had this before you picked iowa there's <laughs> never been a five seed to win the national championship right yeah i, I saw that And the number known. one seeds have won 25 times. So it's kind of like we talk about all this, but at the same time, the Blue Bloods, the top seeds usually do win. But it's nice. The first week is a lot of the upsets. After right. that, it kind of starts to even out and we get started to get the, the, the really good teams moving on. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I have two number ones in my final four, which if they both win, they could be playing a championship. Then we got one against one, right? So right. a one seed wins. So it's, it's, uh, it's still commonly going to happen. That's why they're one seeds. Um, but it, it is nice to see that, uh, that mix, you know, getting a few more teams in there. And I, I think the balance of like the five twelves, you know, the six elevens, 
those games, I think you're get, you're seeing a lot of more balance in. Right. Yeah, which is great. Well, that's what they say. It's always a good bet to pick a 12 seed to win the first round. Yeah. Because usually it's 50%. Well, and those 12 seeds are tournament champions, conference champions from smaller conferences, and and you're going to see a lot of that, you know. Uh, and typically a team like Iowa who won the Big Ten tournament wouldn't come in as a five seed because it's right. rarely, you know, they probably they usually do better in their conference and they come in as a two or a three. Uh, so that was a little different there too. Well, yeah, see, let's see. The 12 seeds were... Two and two. So, yeah, 50%. Yeah. Yeah, and, well, and, you know, what we should have known, and, you know, I, I thought about this, and I don't know why. It, it seems like a 15 always beats a two. Well, lately. <laughs> lately, yes. It just always seems like, you know, you, you think back, it, it's like it's never a one and a 16, right? It's always a two and a 15. Like, I should have well, known. There's only been... There's only been one 16 seed to win. So. Right, that's what I'm saying. It, it, like, that, that never happens. But there has been some 2 and 15s and some notable ones, maybe not a ton of them, but ones we remember. Yeah, there's only been three now. Right. But they're, they're big ones, and I think we don't forget them. Well, yeah, because now they've happened two years in a row. You had Oral yeah. Roberts last year and now this year. So it's kind mm-hmm. of like now it's – that's what i mean it was it was stuck in my mind because you had i think it was the princeton right that one's the one we all remember and then it happened again last year and now i was like man a two's two's got to be to 15 but didn't bet on it it's hard to bet on against kentucky especially no one thought it would be kentucky (laughs) right (laughs) yeah i think it was hard uh anywhere there so yeah uh, ncaa terms great Starts back up again tomorrow. Can't wait. Uh, this is by far, even though as much as I love the beginning of the tournament, the Sweet 16 is my favorite because uh, things get real. Uh, these guys, they play their hearts out yeah. for the next couple of weeks or next week or so. So, uh, man, it's exciting. Uh, but to, to wrap up here, we got to jump into NFL because, you know, we, we talked NFL last week. And just to start off, I mean, Devontae Adams to the Raiders. How did this happen? What's this mean for the Raiders? What's this mean for the Packers? Well, now, well, we'll get into it a little later, but what the Kansas City did, um, it puts the rate, like, if you look at it, uh, Renfro, Waller, and Adams now. Right. Towards the end of the year, when Waller was hurt, they were double teaming Renfro, so he wasn't doing as well. But no, you can't double team all three of them. It's going to be hard. I mean, it's enough. I know it's like sound bias, but it <laughs> well, just I mean, you're irrit- a Raiders fan. <laughs> yes, it just irritates me when I see like national media people saying. Oh, that was a bad trade for the Raiders. It was a first and a second, and it wasn't like it was a top 10 pick. No. It's Devontae Adams. Right. Best receiver, at arguably, right now. Yeah. And it's like, really? But when the Raiders traded Mac for draft picks, they called the Raiders crazy and stupid for that one. So right. it's like, what, what way are you going? Um, I see the same thing. We'll get to the Tyreek Hill trade that just happened today. Everyone's saying Andy Reid's a genius. That's just fine. Uh, he doesn't need Tyreek Hill. No, he, he does need Tyreek Hill because there's no one else that's been Tyreek. If Andy Reid is such a genius, why wasn't Sammy Watkins doing this? Uh, why wasn't McCorl Hardman doing this? Why wasn't Demarcus Robinson doing this? I can name Byron Pringle. I can name all these receivers. Why weren't they putting up the numbers that Tyreek Hill put up? Because they're not Tyreek Hill. Right. And uh, he's a phenom. 
And they're like, oh, well, they got a bunch of draft picks for them. Well, one is what, the 30th pick overall? Right. And then it's like a second, two fourths, and a fifth. Uh, I mean, yeah, definitely <laughs> don't know what Kansas City's doing here. Uh, but yeah, let's let's dig into that next. How does this affect Green Bay? Well, I mean, it's so funny to me because they're like, oh, now they could take a receiver in the first round since they never do. Awesome. Yeah. It's like, okay, if they would have just, here's the thing is, and this happened with Tyreek Hill too, if they would have just paid Adams the money, you know, months and months ago, then this never would have happened. But they tried to lowball him. And then tag he's got him. a buddy in car. And so he's like, screw it, I'm out. And then the Packers are like, no, no, wait. We'll give you the money. And he's like, no, no, I'm out. And I'll take less to go play for the Raiders. Right. That's what he did. Like they talk about his the huge numbers he did, but that's like what the agent says. It, it actually came out to be less than DeAndre Hopkins. So he wasn't even the highest paid receiver out there. How does this affect uh, Rodgers, though, in their pass game? <laughs> and that's the other one. Oh, Rodgers Rogers can make anyone a great receiver. Really? No. <laughs> so so is this the end of Green Bay? Is this the end of Rodgers? Or did, no. Can they I mean, look at their division. Sorry, right. Steve. The Bears are... What they got rid of a bunch of players, yeah. I mean, the Bears aren't going to compete this year for the division. Um, Minnesota may, um, they, they they're okay. Detroit's definitely not so. So, because their division's weak, you think they still win the division, it doesn't affect them that much. No, and then look at the whole NFC now, yeah, really weak. Yeah, I'm like Tom Brady, he's like, ha ha ha, I'm coming that's why back. he came back from retirement, he's like. <laughs> He's like, I'm just going to win the NFC again and have another chance at the Super Bowl. He's going to. I mean, look at the South. Right now, knowing what the Panthers are probably going to take a quarterback, but you got Sam Darnold, Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota starting right. in that division. Really? I mean, it's, it's a good time for Brady to say, let's take another shot. Yeah. And then everyone came back. You know, they were talking about everyone's going to leave and everything. And then Brady came back and they're like, yeah, we're sign staying. us back up. Yeah, and, and cool. to be honest with you, if Godwin stays healthy last year, they they probably go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, you know, so I I, I think uh, Tampa Bay definitely has a, another good shot. Um, Although I'll de- devil's advocate, if Robert Woods stays healthy, the Rams would. Uh, there's only so many footballs yeah. between. Uh, you know, you you added OBJ anyway, right? Who you can't. You don't. You can't make up more footballs to give the right. Woods. But you can't guard all those guys. <laughs> well, they couldn't guard what they had. <laughs> I mean, they already had so much. Uh, so, yeah. I, but that's just such a big hit, uh, though, for for Tampa Bay. But regardless, you're right. Green Bay probably still wins the North. But do, do they even have a chance at the Super Bowl? Though, no. I guess is the question. No. And and without, I, I think that's such a big hit for them. And Aaron Rodgers, you know, I'm not a Green Bay fan and I'm not an Aaron Rodgers fan. But, he, you know, without Adams, he's not as, as good as as he is. You know, I think there's a big hit to him. Right. Um, I, I think Adams, in my opinion, is arguably the, one of the top receivers in the league, if not the best. So uh, what does that mean for the Raiders? You know, you kind of alluded to it, but breaking it down, what do you have now? You've got one of the best third down, short route, uh, get open wide receivers in Renfro, right? He's going to be nasty in the middle of the field, nasty on those short routes and getting those first downs. And now you've got a big play receiver that can catch the ball, unlike somebody like Ruggs, who just runs fast. And now you got Ruggs actually had good hands, though. He wasn't Darius Hayward Bay. But... Yeah. <laughs> He he doesn't have Devonte Adams out. No, and uh, and now you got a great t- and again one of the better tight ends in the league in Waller. 
this makes the Raiders pass offense deadly. Well, what Carr was fifth in the NFL in passing yards last year, and right. Waller Waller missed six games. Well, and you know, at the beginning, he looked like he was going to be number one, and then you know, you have rugs thing and Waller getting hurt and all that stuff. He, mm-hmm. he probably leads the league in passing if everybody stays right. healthy and, and Ruggs doesn't, you know. Well, yeah, you go from <laughs> Zay Jones and Deshaun Jackson to um, putting in Devontae Adams. That's a huge upgrade. Yeah. And so that let's stay in that division and talk about Tyree Hill leaving now Kansas City. So two things I, I can't understand here is one, you get rid of your, your number one weapon, you know, maybe 50, 50 against Travis Kelsey, but still if without Tyree kill, Travis Kelsey's not Travis Kelsey. You don't beat Buffalo without Tyree kill. Right. But again, you know, unless you're getting, you are forcing them to play uh, two deep safeties because of Tyree kill, uh, uh, Travis Kelsey's not getting all this underneath and, mm-hmm. and deep outs and these and the uh, yards he's getting. I don't believe, and you don't know. I mean, Smith Schuster has the ability. He's shown signs of it. He's just not proven, right? But well, the whole whole thing about Smith Schuster was he all his best years were with Antonio Brown, right? So you go to Kansas City and you're like, okay, you're the number two behind and you're going to get all these touches because of Tyree Kill. Now Tyree Kill's gone. Now it's like, why did you even bring up, get Juju Schuster? Because he's not going to, he's not a number one. He's already going to start doing uh, TikTok videos of Jackson Mahomes. They've already set this up. (laughs) So it's like, I don't really understand if you're going to not, if you're going to trade Tyree Kill, why sign Juju Smith Schuster? Does losing and trading Tyree Kill affect now Kansas City's ability to win that division? Yes, because they weren't the best defense already, and it was predicated, everyone was saying, they're going to win the division because they have Patrick Mahomes, Kelsey, and Hill. Now it's Mahomes and Kelsey, and I just don't think they got, what, 28 and 30? they're not going to get one of the top receivers. Right. And, and, so, and they, they let Pringle go. So Pringle's in Chicago now. Demarcus uh, Robinson's with the Raiders. Demarcus Robinson goes to the Raiders. Um, so that's, so you it's, got, it's you've tough. got Hardman, who's been a huge disappointment. And you got Juju Smith-Huster. I mean. So, yeah, I mean, I, I got to tend to agree that I think losing Hill hurts their offense enough that they probably are not the favorite to win the division anymore. And uh, that hurts going into the playoffs in the AFC. Right. And so how, how does Miami make from this? You know, they traded a lot of draft picks and not the greatest draft picks in the world, but, but draft they, picks are draft picks. Yeah, well, they still have two, ne- two number ones next year. So right. they were willing and they, to. And. They still have their number one this year, too. Mm-hmm. Um, they got lots of speed. Yeah. If you look at it, you got Waddle now and Hill. You got Mozart in the backfield. That's they're gonna, I mean, and McDaniel running the show now. I think he's right. like the mad genius out there gonna be running and gunning. This is Tua's year. If t- everyone said the only reason Tua was good is because he had all the Alabama players. Well, now he's got just <laughs> as talented players now. So is the two right. going to be awesome now? I mean, you, you think about it. Let's say Tua stays healthy all year, which has been an issue for him. Right. Stays healthy. Uh, he's in the right mindset because he has now a, a superstar in Hill. He gets to bring back two people he's very comfortable with, and Waddell, who had you know what you know rookie receiving record for receptions, Jaseki, who's a, a wide receiver tight end combo, right. one of the toughest guards in the league as far as if you're trying to put a linebacker on him. And I think one of the biggest signs, most underrated signs, is Mosher because he's he can go the distance every single play. Right. And they got Chase Edmonds just in case Mozart gets hurt again because he has injury history. 
and they just signed Taryn Armstead, the, yeah, the I best saw that. player in free agency. Right. So now you're securing the offensive line too. Um, man, uh, it's looking really good for McDaniel coming in as a first year coach. Yep. <laughs> uh, but they uh, still have to worry about the bills. Right. Because the bills had a great free agency too. And, and the bills were uh, on, on the rise anyway. So, you know, looking at, you know, free agency overall here, you know, there's a few teams, there's a lot of teams that didn't do great in free agency, uh, but there's some teams that did really well. I think the Bills free agency was underrated. I think they did better than most people gave them credit for with uh, uh, OJ Howard, uh, Shaq Lawson, uh, Saffield, uh, Von Miller. They, they did a little uh, both for offense and defense. Yeah, Crowder. Um, what about the, the here's the big one. We talked about this last week, and and I told you guys that I thought Watson was going to Cleveland. And what happens? So yeah. Watson goes to Cleveland. So how does this what does this mean for Cleveland? Uh, does is Watson able to to turn him around and, and get him back on the right track? I don't think so. I still think they're the third best team in that division. And he's the third best quarterback in that division too. <laughs> if you look at it, you got Joe Burrow and Lamar and Jackson. Lamar Jackson, right. Uh, statistically, he's not the, the third best quarterback. Statistically, he's probably the first best. But he's been out, right, for a while. So how much does that hurt him? Well, uh, and then I learn a new offense. I mean, it's great with the, the running backs, Chubb and Hunt. That's great. Right. I, you know, I can't trust Amari Cooper to show up every game. And they, he just he has, has big games. He has lost, he will show up and he'll get you 200 yards in a game. <laughs> every <Yeah>. four games. <laughs> yeah. And then he'll show up and then the next game will be 40. Right. Um, well, they, do, they, they, you know, uh, they really put a lot of stock in Njoku. Um, which again, I think he's one of those hit or miss guys, but he uh, physically and talent wise, and Joku can be one of the best tight ends in the league. Right. So you just got to get him to show up every game. Well, uh, you got to also realize the Ravens, how many injuries did they have last year? Yeah. And they were still competitive. So we got to realize this last year was an anomaly. They'll be back. Uh, Burrow. Cincinnati went to the Super Bowl, obviously. Yeah, and they picked up Laurel Collins. They picked, I mean, they beefed up that offensive line. And what right. was the one thing they needed? If right. Joe Burrow would have had one second more, he would have been able to throw mm-hmm. to Jamar Chase for a touchdown and win the Super Bowl. Right. And quietly, Pittsburgh got better um, outside of saying, well, can Mitchell Trubisky be serviceable, which he can. Come right. on, Steve. But, Talk about, you know, the draft when the Bears drafted Trubisky and you're like, oh, my gosh, it's the best thing ever. You know, he's he's, he's just a guy that needs um, – he needed he needed a different coach when he came in because he needed more molding. Like, he, he, was a, he wasn't a second overall pick, but he has the brain. He's got the physical – he's got everything that it takes – but he, he barely played, you know, it, he was only a starter for one year and at North Carolina and not playing the tough teams and didn't even play all the games, you know? So they didn't move him slow enough. Statistically, you compare him against a lot of other people. He's got decent stats. They add some great offensive line in Pittsburgh. They've got a good running back coming into a second year. They add miles Jack. Pittsburgh could be tough. Yes. As long as they, stick with the running game and go back to old Pittsburgh ways because right. their defense is really stacked. Well, I think that's why they also go out and get two good linemen to go with a couple good linemen that they already have. Right. So I, I think Pittsburgh can also be a threat. I think that becomes a very tough division um, with the addition of Deshaun Watson in Cleveland. Well, looking at the AFC, <laughs> you've got – 13 of the what 
16 teams, you yeah. can say they can make the playoffs. Well, because Miami got a whole lot better. The yeah. Patriots, you got to think, are always going to be there. Yeah. You know, the, the only ones I don't see the are the Jets, Jets suck. <laughs> Texans and Jaguars. Yeah. Jets, Texans, and Jags, they all suck. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, as you look across the board here, um, I mean, even Indianapolis adding Matt Ryan. Yeah. Because just because of his consistency, right? That's what Indianapolis needs. They have talent um, across the, the offense right. and the defense. But to be honest with you, Carson Wentz is killing them with his bad decisions all year. Well, yeah, I mean, has Matt Ryan ever had someone like Jonathan Taylor before? Right. He had, he had Devontae Freeman, but they decided to stop running the ball against the Patriots. I don't think that's happening with the Colts. And they legit have one of the best offensive lines in the league. And you might see someone, one of his uh, old teammates, you never know, signing with them and Julio right. Jones. Yeah, you know, trying to fill out that receiver core because you add one good, re- one, not a veteran, right? Just somebody who can catch the ball, who's consistent. Now you've got a very dangerous offense in Indianapolis. Well, you look at it like it's like the Raiders. You look at the Raiders, you're like, oh, they're not going to do well. Look at what everyone did. And then you add Devontae Adams, and that changes the offense right. completely. The Dolphins, nice little team. You add Tyreek Hill to it, changes that offense completely. Now, I'm not saying Julio is going to be Julio anymore. Um, but if, he, be. if he's if he's healthy, he's a threat. Right. If he catches 60 balls for a, a 900 to 1,000 yards, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that's exactly what you need him to do, you know? And so, and then of course you, now Tennessee, do they have the best quarterback ever? No. I mean, I'm not, a, never been a Tannehill fan, but you, you add a guy like Robert Woods and a really good tight end and Austin Hooper, yeah. you know, and re-sign your great center and your great linebacker, like, and, and you got Derrick Henry. Henry will be back. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. It's like, now you got Derrick Henry. So Tennessee, you know, brings all that too. There's just not a real bad teams in the AFC, and the AFC is going to be really tough. I mean, that's just going to be a battle this year. Where the NFC, I think, is just trash. Yeah, it's – I can already – if we want to do our predictions right now, it's going to be Tampa Bay <laughs> – Green Bay, the Rams, the Cowboys, uh, the Eagles, the um, Cardinals, and the 49ers. And that's it. Right. I mean, yeah. And, and even a couple of those teams are still questionable of to whether they're going to beat out the worst teams, the, the right. teams that aren't as good. You know, um, I think you, if a couple of those teams you just named have some injury issues or, you know, just don't play well. You could see teams like the Saints and the Vikings and uh, uh, Commanders. You know, <laughs> fighting for for position. So, well, I'll tell it, you this: the the Eagles, three first round picks. They better do something, right? You know, and they made the playoffs. And, and if they stick to that run game, you know, they don't. You can't rely on Jalen Hurts to, to win games for you, but you you can play your game and uh, be the team, the leading rusher in the NFL as a team and, and make it. So, yep. And the Cowboys got worse. This <laughs> they did. Yeah. And you never know what's going to happen. You know, Elliot can blow up in his head and, and, uh, and then all of a sudden you're relying on Prescott without great receivers. CD lamb, don't be wrong. I think C lamb's amazing. Like CD lamb's a great receiver, but Gallup, He's always been a question mark in my mind. Uh, I think Schultz is, is going to turn into a great tight end. I don't even think it's going to be Zeke. I think it's going to be Pollard. I think Zeke's going to make all that money and be on the bench. That's the thing, you know, and then, and don't get me wrong, I like Pollard, but either way, they're, neither of them are dominant backs at this point, you know, and so it does fall on Prescott's shoulders. And as much as Amari Cooper's hit or miss, I think it takes a weapon that's vital out of their offense. Well, and they lost Collins on the offensive line. 
mm-hmm. and they lost one of the guards too. So they're not going to be, they're not the same old Dallas D offensive line. That's going to punish you and run the ball down your throat. Right. Yeah. And, and so again, he comes back to, you've got to throw the ball a lot, right? Yeah. So yeah, Dallas may not even be there, I guess is the point there. Right. And uh, I mean, as bad as Seattle looks after losing Wilson, they signed some good players and, and maybe they can compete in this horrible NFC. Baker Mayfield. <laughs> so yeah, they, uh, I mean, and again, you know, as bad as I think, and as much as I think Chicago is in a rebuild, it's not like they don't have a chance to make the playoffs. Right. You know, so um, I think the NFC is wide open, and I think the AFC is just going to be as strong as we've ever seen a division in the NFL. Right. I don't yeah, think it's ever been this heavily weighted one side or the other. I feel like this is like, you remember the NBA when the West was so strong? Yeah. It was like the West was always going to win. They had tons of teams winning a bunch of games. And it was like, no matter what, if it was an East-West game, West was winning. Right. I kind of feel like that's the way the FC and FC are. are right well, it would have been like the 70s when it was the Raiders, Steelers, and Dolphins. You knew that right. the AFC was going to win. And then in the, you know, 80s and 90s, it was the NFC. Because you yeah. had the Bears and you had the Giants and the 49ers and the Cowboys. Yeah, the Cowboys, yeah. Redskins, or the, yeah, they were the Redskins then. <laughs> yeah, no, we call them the Commanders now. <laughs> wow, man, uh, great stuff in the, in the NFL. Free agency has been so exciting in the NFL. I can't wait for next season. A lot of great moves. Uh, is this even the end like who knows what's gonna happen (laughs) we don't know it's like today i'm like looking at my phone i'm like what (laughs) kansas city's looking to trade tyree kill and i'm like no no you're right i mean i got really i got the breaking alert and i was like this is not happening it's not real (laughs) but you know it's it's crazy stuff and it's gonna make for a great season uh so we'll wrap it up uh sweet 16 tomorrow starts tomorrow Good games. Can't wait to, to see how this plays out in the tournament. That's awesome. Uh, hopefully we'll get, you know, West back on, at least for the for the final there. Uh, got some cool things coming up. Uh, we should have the uh, – we're trying to get the, uh, the smoking uh, barbecue podcast done. Hopefully we'll get that done soon, uh, maybe next week. Uh, we got to – I know it's it's a tough one, but we got to stretch back the politics for another pol- for another podcast. Big things happen around the world right now, yeah. especially in you Ukraine. Single-handed sailor, we got to get him on. Yeah, talk to single sailor. So we got that coming in. Uh, he wants to he wants to do a live podcast, and he's probably coming to Portland. Uh, he said, hopefully. So we'll get that uh, hopefully lined up here as well. So for those of you watching, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like that notification bell. So you see them coming up, but you know, we're here every week, uh, next week, again, following up on March madness, uh, final thoughts. I I just don't know what's going to happen. You got Mark, something's going to happen where you're going to have a team big upset. And all of a sudden the NFL is going to be like, Nope, someone else is traded now. Just so they can one up the March Madness. <laughs> They're trying to get up on March Madness. Maybe that's what they force them to trade Ty- Tyree Kill. They're like, St. Peter's is in the Sweet 16. You have to trade Tyree Kill. Yep. No, no, <laughs> next will be Baker Mayfield. That's the next one. Well, my 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 last thing is is an eight seed North Carolina and a ten or ten seed uh Miami in the final four. That's my final thought. Write that down. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, We'll see you next week.